Hi guys, in this video we are going to expand on the introduction about variational inference. So where did variational inference come from? The concepts emerged in the late 80s, early 90s in the context of neural networks. There are two papers that are mentioned as the start of VI. One is by Peterson and Anderson from 1987, and here is a picture of Peterson. And one is by Hinton and Van Kamp uh, from 1993. And here is a picture of Hinton. In both papers, the domain problem was to calculate weights in neural networks. In Peterson's case, it was Boltzmann machines, which are pattern completion algorithms. And the weights of the Boltzmann machines are determined by the correlation of the states of the patterns. And the distribution of the states is too difficult, so it's replaced by an approximation. And in Hinton's case, the problem is to find posterior weights in Bayesian neural networks, where you place a prior over the weights, and then after looking at the data, you are looking for the posterior weights. But the true posterior is intractable, so it's replaced by some approximation. The algorithmic problem, if you may, is to replace Monte Carlo integration. So Monte Carlo integration is too costly, it takes too long, let's find some quick and dirty approximation to replace it with. And so the basic idea is to replace hard calculations with good enough approximations. And we do this through optimization in variational inference. We are usually trying to calculate the posterior, but we, it can be done for any distribution where we don't know its normalizing constant. The method is to pose a family of distributions. For example, a family of Gaussians, a family of Gaussian mixture models, etc. We can denote it by capital Q. And this family is parameterized by three variational parameters, which we will denote by theta. So for example, in the Gaussians, the theta are the mean and standard deviation or covariance matrix, depending on the dimensionality. So we will denote each variational distribution by Q of Z parameterized by theta. And usually we assume a mean field variation family. This is another approximating assumption where if we have a posterior over multiple dimensions, we are using one dimensional distributions to approximate each dimension. So we are basically only approximating the marginals and we are losing the correlations between the different Z's. This is called full mean field. If we are allowing to keep some correlations and this is called structured mean field. How do we find the optimal theta well, we try to minimize the KL divergence between this variational distribution, which we can control, and the posterior, which we don't know completely, we only know up to a normalizing constant. But because we are using the KL divergence, we will see that the normalizing constant will become irrelevant, and then we will only have to optimize the elbow, the stuff that we actually know. And if we do this, we can come up with an algorithm the main analytical algorithm, if you may, which is called coordinate ascent variational inference, CAVI. And for it, we have to, for each problem, uh, calculate analytically the algorithm, the calculations, and then code it. And so there are some more advanced algorithms that are more general purpose, for example, automatic differentiation or black box VI, which allow to use the same algorithm on many different problems. And they are a form of stochastic variational inference. There's also another form. We will discuss all of that later. Why is it called variational? Well, the KL or the elbow are functionals. They take in a function, a distribution function, and they return a single value. So the calculus of variation is concerned with how do you optimize functionals? So how do you optimize this objective with regards to a function? And in practice, we actually don't really need the calculus of variation. As we will see, there's other ways to arrive at the solution, but it's also nice to have and know. And in any case, this is what gives the V in variational inference. Who are the competitors of variational inference? Well, the main competitors are MCMC, Markov Chain Monte Carlo. It uses sampling. It's much slower, but it's asymptotically exact. So if you are willing to pay the computational price, uh, you will have samples from the true distribution, but you might have to wait for a very long time. 
The eye, on the other hand, uses optimization. It's much faster, but it's only an approximation. It has an inferior performance. So usually we will use it where there is enough data available to compensate for this inferior performance. So we can look at both of these methods, MCMC and VI, as complementary. MCMC is used for small scale problems and VI is used for large scale problems. Finally, I want to give a course outline. We are now finishing with the intro. After that, we will talk about the KL divergence. Then we will see what is the relation between VI and maximum likelihood. Then we will see how we can get from the KL into the elbow, this quantity that doesn't depend on the normalizing constant. We will have a more in-depth look at mean field assumption and what is going on there. Then we will spend quite some time on the Cavi algorithm, how to derive it and see some examples of it. We will then focus on the exponential family and see how it can simplify the Cavi algorithm. We will study the relations between VI and the EM algorithm, the expectation maximization algorithm. It turns out that they are very closely related and also can be combined together into this hybrid algorithm called variational EM. We will then look at stochastic variational inference, uh, especially stochastic variational inference for exponential family, but then other types of SVIs such as automatic differentiation VI and black box VI. Finally, we will look at expectation propagation, which is a similar algorithm that is closely related to variational inference. So quite a lot of work ahead of us. This is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.